I resented every beauty about Colorado. Colorado is very, very beautiful. We have mountains, you know, in the morning they're bathed with this purple light. It's just exquisite. And I would just glare at them and be like, they were the symbol of having been taken away from, from where I felt like I belonged. And after a while I started to realize, oh, I'm miserable. And I'm actually doing this. I'm actually contributing to, to this in some way. And I don't know exactly if it was like the dawning of that or something else happened, but I started to just, um, I started to just see beauty everywhere. And I just started to really focus on beauty and every, everywhere. And I realized that that energy, like that sort of relationship went from, I am a miserable human being who is pretty much a drain on everyone who's around me to actually feeling like I was made of light, you know, it was like, and I was inhaling the beauty around me. Stay connected to gratitude. Hit the follow button right now and join thousands of listeners tuning in each week. We're the Gratitude Seekers. Come join us. Hi, Gratitude Seeker. Welcome to a new episode of the Gratitude Podcast. Today, as always, we have another really special person here on the Gratitude Podcast. She's an Ayurvedic practitioner, mother of two, sustainability advocate, TEDx speaker, recovering cult member, and the CEO of RASA, an adaptogenic coffee alternative revolutionizing people's relationship to their energy. She's always been obsessed with energy and um, she is uh, currently working on finding ways to help people with energy. And I think, of course, uh, this is an important part of how we work as humans. But she has a really interesting story that I would love to uh, find out more about and share with you on the podcast. Her name is Lupa van der Mersch, and uh, I'm really happy to have her here with us on the Gratitude Podcast. Welcome, Lopa. Thank you so much, Georgian. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Wow. Uh, I can really feel how present you are, and I really appreciate that. Hmm. It's great how you can feel those things across the miles, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's actually quite amazing. Uh, yeah, I I love realizing how the simple thing that we're doing right now is actually um, thanks to many complicated things that are happening in between us. Um, but for us, it's simple and it feels like uh, we're having a conversation uh, being in the same room. So I'm always grateful for this and um yeah it's it's amazing how how close we can feel no matter how how far away we are but i wanted to um to ask you more about your story um you have done some some amazing things and um the the first thing that i'm really curious about is how was it when you moved to costa rica to take care of wildlife in the rainforest mm. um, when you had no electricity and you were basically most of the time just with nature. I'm really curious about that experience because um, gratitude works great in contrast. Like uh, mm. when we have experiences like, like these, it's when we can see the and the the amazing things that we are experiencing right now so let us know a little bit about um that part of your experience i love that you pulled that one out that's one of my favorite experiences of my life so it's a joy to get a chance to speak about <laughs> and it's so apropos to gratitude as well um 
because I, you know, as soon as you mentioned that and we're in the context of, of, you know, you have created this like sacred container for exploring gratitude, which is really beautiful. And so I'm in that container with you. And then it gave me an opportunity to reflect on this experience that I've had um, in a new light. And uh, when, when I was down there, um, you know, had none of the normal amenities that, you know, didn't even have a refrigerator. Um, our running water came from the creek. And so if it rained, the water would turn brown. So if the clouds came in, we'd be like, oh, get water from the creek before, before we get have brown water for drinking. Because you never knew if it was going to rain for, you know, an hour or a full day. Um, and uh, it really gave me an experience of gratitude for, like, the very simple things of existence. And now granted, I was also in an incredibly beautiful place um, and, and deep and beautiful nature, virgin rainforest, but I did not need things for my gratitude. I had, I had only what I could fit in my backpack. And in fact, my clothes would all get moldy very quickly. Um, and so I had, I had all these, I had to wash my clothes even if I didn't wear them once a week, otherwise they just get completely moldy and, and destroyed. Um, and so I had to preserve the, the few things that I had. And, um, you know, even without electricity, even without, you know, I, I think I had $60, <laughs> you know, um, very little money. Um, I was incredibly happy. And I think that it, it gave me an experience that the, the base, like this, it gave me this felt experience that I think will never go away, that the base of our human experience is actually is actually a state of happiness and gratitude um, if we have sufficiency in our environment and we don't need very much for sufficiency. And so often the things that we add on top, you know, the things that we want and the you know, goals we have in our lives and the, the physical stuff um, actually kind of clogs our channels of experiencing gratitude and experiencing happiness with life as it is. So, uh, it was an amazing experience. Uh, nature is such an incredible teacher, and um, I it was it was an experience of wonder and awe at nature constantly, and myself as part of nature. You know, I was very close to, you know, I saw snakes that could kill me, you know, at least a couple of times a week. Um, <laughs> and um, you know, you're constantly surrounded by beautiful and deadly things, um, and it just made the experience of being alive so fantastic and the realization that we we don't need much to feel sufficiency and to feel um, abundance and to feel gratitude exactly exactly and uh, what you just shared reminded me of a story um, i'm not able to say it perfectly but um, it goes something like this and there, there was a fisherman um and and the business person um and the business po person approached the fisherman and said um that he can um he can fish more and uh, sell the fish and uh, get a bigger boat and fish even more and uh, get several boats and hire other people and so on and so forth and grow this business and um, then once he will have all of his fleet uh, with boats that are going out fishing and uh, people working for for him then he will be able to um, to just be at peace and and uh, just fish quietly having uh, the financial part solved and uh, his perspective was, why would I need to do all of these things when I can do this right now? You know, I can enjoy this experience of fishing right now. You know, so yes, I was thinking is. about uh, the, having things, you know, versus experiencing. Yeah, um, that is one of my favorite stories, actually. I, I say that one a surprising amount. <laughs> you told it perfectly. You told it perfectly. Oh, thank you. Thank you. 
Yeah, I, I have a mind that's just focused on uh, the, the the practical parts, and um, I don't uh, remember the exact details. But I'm I'm happy that uh, that you said that uh, uh, it was good the way <laughs> the way I um, told the story. So yeah, I think this experience of being in nature is both a beautiful connection and also a, a reminder of how how good we have it each and every day like uh, for me that's that's one of the things that i'm uh, reminded of when for instance when when it's raining uh, or when it's very hot outside or uh, where when there are all kinds of bugs that uh, don't let, let you enjoy the the present moment in, in nature. Think about the fact that actually we've managed to to create some environments that even though we're we've gotten used with them, they are amazing. Like we can control everything in 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 very much in in detail, so that it's perfectly tailored to what we like and we sometimes fail to to see this and to appreciate this i think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah the fact that we have you know so many of us in modern life have climate control uh refrigeration um you know we can keep the bugs out you know all, all these kinds of things um it makes makes it comfortable in a way that um it's it's sometimes easy to fall into complacency and to forget to be grateful. That's that's so true. That's so true. Yeah. Uh, but getting um, back a bit to um, just this perspective that we we have in general on on life and on spirituality, I know that you've had uh, some interesting experiences experiences being um, a cult member and um, it actually helped you find nuance over dogma and I think um, this is this is one that's very powerful and very important for for many of us because we all tend to have some kind of um, dogmas that we uh, that we have in our life that aren't actually serving us and it's it's one of the um one of the reasons why i'm i'm doing this podcast as well to to find out nuances of gratitude not just um dogmatic ideas that um some people might have about this topic and I'm really curious on on your perspective on this. How how did your perspective on the world change from um, dogma to nuance? Mm. Yeah, thank you. That's a great question. Um, one of the things that I realized as I came out of this um, traumatic cultic environment was that you know i started to look at what got me in there you know of course i started to look at you know what are the what are the beliefs what are the habits and patterns that i that brought me in and and made me continue to say it was okay to be in a pretty abusive context and um that got me started examining so many things um, about you know the way that I am and you know from attachment traumas um, and some of the you know unhealed childhood wounds to um, some of the beliefs that I had taken on with spirituality and uh, my beliefs around growth. I, I was very aggressive about um, <laughs> growing and thinking that like it really really had to hurt, otherwise I wasn't really growing. For example, um, and. I started examining, you know, entire, entire kind of structures of identity of myself in a way. 
um, you know, down to like, okay, so I consider myself to, you know, be an environmentalist or, or I consider myself to be politically left. What does that mean? You know, just to take an example, what does that mean? Um, okay, so that means these certain things about me. And in, I think this is especially interesting in the context of a very media saturated world um, and our very media saturated lives. We are reflected many, many things that we, you know, impact us and influence us in, in subtle and gross ways. And we take on parts of this identity. And so I'm going to, just because politics is so um, hot right now and such an easy uh, press, you know, precedent to be looking at for the current context. Um, so if someone is, is left on the political scale, then they, they have these certain characteristics. That means that you are, you know, in the American context right now, um, you're a pro-vaccine, which means you are, um, you know, you're an environmentalist, you know, you want to stop climate change, you want these, all of these different kind of beliefs that go with, like, I am a left person, you know, versus if you're on the right, then it has a whole other set of beliefs and structures and identities around that. And I started to really examine each one of those in, in, from my political perspective, from my spiritual perspective, from my, like, even like, what do I value? What do I believe in? What's important to me? And that process made me start. So all of those kind of identity structures become their own dogmas. Um, they are, the, and, and we tend to, to take them face value. And I think especially in, in the context of modern media, um, just like, oh, and a, a great example in the United States right now, and I'm not sure how it is where you are, but um, you know, one of the things that's happening now is if somebody chooses not to get the vaccine, then they, for whatever reason, that has, you know, all these political implications about what they are as a person, you know, oh, okay, then you must um, be a Trump supporter, you must be an anti-vaxxer, somebody who doesn't like vaccines in general, you must be this, 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 and this. And all of that is dogma. All of that is not actually looking into the real texture of the situation. And it makes sense in a very over busy life, um, which so many of our, our modern lives are. Um, we need to do that to some extent. It's, it's easier to do that because it simplifies things. It's just like stereotypes. Stereotypes are also dogmas and ideas about people. Um, and, and we do that to ourselves. We have dogmas and stereotypes and ideas about ourselves. And so I kind of, in, in that process of recovering from the cult, I examined every aspect of myself and every belief and looked at some of the things. I was like, wait a second, this one's not mine. I, I, I borrowed that from somebody else, put it on myself because I thought it would look good, whatever it is. And it doesn't belong. It doesn't fit with, with this sense of who I am and what feels right to me. Um, and so I got to dig into sort of what is this core sense of self. And I think, you know, in that experience, um, you know, one of the lenses I can use to look at this for gratitude is it's so easy to think like, well, we should be grateful for certain things. And I, myself in my life, um, especially in, in recent years, I've had, uh, it's, it's been a bit of a struggle to grow Rasa and have my kids and be recovering from the cult and the complex uh, PTSD that I've had from that, you know, all those things at once. And, and then I've had this, uh, I would kind of use gratitude to, as a weapon on myself, be like, well, you should be grateful, you know, like, look at all you have. And like, you know, and, and that, is not an effective approach um, to feeling gratitude. It's just a, a way of beating yourself down more. Um, trying to should yourself into gratitude isn't going to work any, any, in any context. And I think that that's a dogma that many people hold around gratitude and being grateful. Exactly. Um, is, that, is that, you know, well, we should. And, and, you know, and then it can also, you know, that can lead towards kind of a false sense of gratitude, which doesn't actually penetrate your heart and come from within. And I think my experience um, most is that gratitude is, is best when it's actually coming from within and not something that I'm trying to put on myself or say that I should have. Um, and for, forcing myself to feel gratitude so far has not worked. Um, although, which is different though than actively cultivating and working on gratitude as a practice, like it's exercise, like it's a muscle. 
um, you know, in the same way that you wouldn't go and say like, well, I'm going to force myself to lift this 400 pound weight. Um, you're going to hurt yourself if you do that, you know, without, without training. But if you're slowly like, okay, I am committed to cultivating this, this exercise, this practice, this strength of gratitude, I'm going to start with five pounds and then 10, and then I'm going to just build it up. And then some, at some point you will be, um, it'll be much more easy for you to lift 400 pounds, even if you don't do it every day. Someday you might be like, you know, I just don't have it today. Life beat me down and um, I am not grateful. Um, but then, but then you have those muscles to be like, okay, all right, today, I, I don't want to wallow in this place. Today I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to do the thing um, to use exercise as a metaphor. So um, yeah, that, that was a lot. And sometimes I speak very kind of circuitously. So um, hopefully, hopefully hit some of the points that we, that we wanted to hit there, but uh, yeah, the cult, the cult taught me a lot. Yeah, you sure did. And you actually got to one of the my favorite topics on, on gratitude. And um, yeah, li- like you said, it's, um, it's a dogma that people um, put on others and on themselves as well. This one with uh, you should be grateful or I should be grateful. I think it's a very bad approach. And um, it's, it's something that we tend to to do uh, with other people as well and we tend to do it with ourselves and if you want someone to feel ashamed you can do that and (laughs) you can easily make that person feel ashamed but if you go deeper and uh, have some empathy you can understand how how it works how you work with with this with gratitude with appreciation and how they work as well and there are much better ways of approaching this of course than um just using this idea of you should be grateful like i said you're going to um help someone feel ashamed but you're not going to help them feel grateful so yeah i think it's it's an important dogma that um, is specific to gratitude. And uh, yeah, it's one, one of the things that I'm uh, trying here to, um, n- not to fight, to take to another level, to take it deeper, basically, because when, when we go deeper we, and we have empathy, we understand how how it actually works and why it's hard for some people to feel grateful and how we can help them if if we really want that um and i think it's it's something important for for all of us to to learn at one point but i also wanted to 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 talk a little bit about energy and your obsession with energy um yeah. when did this obsession start and um where where is it right now (laughs) great question um it started you know in my teens really um at that point i was really something awoke in me i don't know how else to say um yeah this actually ties nicely into uh a, a really early experience of going from darkness to gratitude. I was in my teens and we had, I had moved in the middle of high school across the country to a new state, moved to Colorado. Um, I, and, you know, I felt like I was rich from the place that I belonged, from the people that I felt like I belonged with, from that sense of safety that is so important, you know, especially for teens. And um, I resented every beauty about Colorado. Colorado is very, very beautiful. We have mountains, you know, in the morning they're bathed with this purple light. It's just exquisite. And I would just glare at them and be like, you know, they were the symbol of having been taken away from, from where I felt like I belonged. And after a while I started to realize, oh, I'm miserable. (laughs) And I'm actually doing this. I'm actually contributing to to this in some way and i don't know exactly if it was like the dawning of that or something else happened but 
I started to just, um, I started to just see beauty everywhere. And I just started to really focus on beauty and every, everywhere. And I realized that that energy, like that sort of relationship went from, I am a miserable human being who is pretty much a drain on everyone who's around me to actually feeling like I was like made of light, you know, it was like, and I was inhaling the beauty around me and that experience of energy. I was 16 at that time. Um, and began to coincide with me starting to explore spiritual concepts and, um, and spiritual path in general. <clears throat> and, uh, I started to get hungry for more of that. It was like, I had tasted this experience that felt like, um, you know, I, I, I see energy can be seen in so many different ways. Um, and to define it for me, for me, it's like a, it's a quality of beingness. It's a quality of experience. Like we all have this, you know, I am, I am a me and I am experiencing reality right now. And, you know, we have this little texture that kind of goes with that. And that texture influences our emotions. It influences our thoughts. It influences, you know, so many different things. And I started to get really interested in how could I also have that be bi-directional and me influence that texture and influence that energy, whether it was through meditation, whether it was through what I was eating and how I was, um, how I was engaging with my body and, and all of that. And um, not to say that it was a, you know, a perfect path to, you know, constant sourcing of more energy. I, I you know, fell off miserably many times, but um, it was that first experience that had me being like, okay, what I, I want more of that. And I experienced that energy, you know, I, I have a, a spiritual lens and maybe not everybody does. Um, <clears throat> but to me, that was, that was like the experience of God and God itself felt like a quality of, of energy. Um, and so I was hunting and seeking and asking and pleading and praying um, to find more of that. And that quest took me in many, many different directions, um, including in a cult, but also including in, you know, a very beautiful spiritual tradition that I was in before that, um, where I learned, a, you know, a whole slew of meditation practices and ways of working with energy and ways of aligning ourselves with energy of virtues um, to bring more of those virtues into our own lives and um, ways of working with the mind so that the mind becomes less of a hindrance to our experience of energy and so many different things. I'm in a very different phase of life from, you know, being a teen and being in my early twenties and having total freedom and being able to do whatever I wanted and, you know, meditate for hours a day and travel all over the world and all those good things. Um, and uh, now I have two children, you know, I'm a wife I have a business, I have a, um, you know, 20, 20 or so people who depend on me for their livelihood in a, in a very real way. They also depend on each other very much. And, you know, we're all doing this together, but it's, uh, it's definitely an experience of, of a lot of responsibility and a lot of energy. <clears throat> and um, one of the things that I'm really working with now is... Um, I, because I have so much that I'm kind of wielding in my life right now, I have to be incredibly responsible to the quality and flow of my energy. And that quality and flow of my energy is one part, you know, my own um, contributions to it and my own, you know, the ways that I work with it. And also one part, you know, God given and biologically limit, limited. Um, and so, uh, you know, I have burned myself out so badly in the past and realized just how much that affects the business, how much that affects my kids, my husband, everybody around me. Um, and so I have this responsibility to really steward my energy and um, to, uh, yeah, just to, to stay in a regenerative cycle with it instead of kind of burning it all out and then replenishing it a little bit and burning it all out and replenishing it a little bit um, because that's a, that's a depletive cycle. Um, and so I'm trying to stay in this, in this zone where it's like, okay, if I start to feel the, I'm, I'm getting a little burned out or I'm getting a little kind of brittle and more dry and more um, 
sharp in my energy quality than, and I was actually just experiencing this last night and I was supposed to um, have dinner with my in-laws and I was like, you know what? I, I really need a bit of rest time <clears throat> because if I don't get that, I'm gonna start going off. And you know, luckily I had the, the circumstances where I was able to, to go ahead and take a little bit of rest. And it was just amazing to feel how it kind of pooled back in. And I was like, okay, there's, there's some more of that energy that I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna have to um, be, be careful with it and be this steward of this um, finite experience that we have um, of being alive and the energy that comes with it, the, the energy that infuses our consciousness and, and animates us as humans. Um, and, uh, you know, and our, our product is very focused around that and the quality of energy that you're bringing in. And, you know, we're a coffee alternative. And so many people think of, you know, I think coffee and energy are kind of synonymous in a certain way in, in modern culture and the way that we use it. And, um, my experience of, of coffee also very influenced by my experience um, studying Ayurveda for many years um, and then also uh, doing exploration in Chinese medicine and Taoist practices and all of this. Uh, coffee is, it's a pretty blunt object um, in terms <laughs> of uh, the way that it energizes you and like it, it's it's functional, you know, it works in certain ways, but it also, um, we view it as an extractive type of energy. Chinese medicine actually has a saying that coffee borrows energy from tomorrow to fuel today. And that's the exact mm. kind of extractive cycle that so many of us are in with respect to our own lives. Um, and, and in respect to our relationship to the earth as well, we're taking out too much and not putting enough back in. And so when we started Rasa, we were like, how could we, give people an experience of energy and sustaining um, so that they can continue to do all the things and you know, be supported in that, but also in a way that gives back. So like almost like regenerative agri agriculture is giving carbon back to the soil and keeping um, a, a closed loop system um, in, in a sense within the, uh, within the energy of that ecosystem. We're trying to do the same um, with our own body and our own energy. And modern life is, you know, it's very, it can be very extractive. It can be very, um, you know, burn yourself out today so that you can get the, the wind tomorrow, um, you know, fish more and more fish so that you can eventually relax um, and, um, and, and relax and just fish um, and enjoy a, a simple fishing life. Um, and that's a, a, a pretty common, you know, trope in modern society, but it, if you change the way that you energize because our energy influences every aspect of our lives, you know, it really does energy and emotions are very closely linked to each other. Our ability to access gratitude, our ability to access the best parts of ourselves comes when we're in, you know, as, as much of a balanced state as is workable for our current life circumstances. And when we also accept okay, I, I can't change this thing. You know, this thing is bigger than me and it's just going to be what it is. So how can I also work to accept that? But we have more access to, to that if, we're, if, if the quality of our energy is nourished, calm, vital. Um, and, uh, you know, the quality of energy that you get from, for example, drinking the herbs that we, that we include in our coffee alternatives is a very different quality of energy than coffee. But you're also, you know, on the scientific level, you know, you're not getting that cortisol spike. So coffee, part of why you feel so awesome when you have coffee is because it gives you a cortisol spike. Cortisol is a stress hormone. So it's giving you that like, you know, I can run away from the tiger or I can fight the tiger. It's going to be fine. Um, and we don't want to be in that state all the time. You know, we want to try and actually work against that state, particularly because modern life has so many of that kind of messaging um, around us and our, and our modern um bodies haven't caught up to the fact that when our phone rings, it isn't a, a minor emergency. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's like, oh, I have something happen. I have to pay attention. And we're kind of, uh, they caught it, they call it, um, what is it? Automatic. Oh, why am I forgetting the term? It's AFE, automatic facilitation, something um, where we're kind of 
always micro stressed um, just by the circumstances of our lives. Um, and, you know, of course that varies from person to person and context to context, but I, I think that that is, you know, pretty, pretty broadly the case. And um, so if we're, if we're ener energizing and nourishing ourselves and nourishing our nervous system and actually working with calming that stress cycle um, by what we're taking in, even just as a, you know, daily cup, a daily habit, um, it's going to actually ripple out in so many different ways in your life. And uh, so that's, you know, one of the things that we're doing, you know, as a business, and then I'm working with that, you know, in as many ways as I can as well, seeing just how much my inner energy impacts the people that I have become responsible to. Most definitely, most definitely. I've seen in, in my own experience that, um, managing energy is extremely important and um the, the quality of life is influenced by by this as well and the quality of the interactions and um one of the things that i i've come to accept is that for instance at at the end of the day um for me at least it's since i have less energy for me, it's just harder to feel grateful. It's um, my brain is like focused on just rest and um, not thinking about all kinds of things um, that have happened uh, throughout the day and just is, is more likely to, uh, to be influenced by, by negative things and negative thoughts. And, um, I've for for a while I I tried to fight it, but I've seen that this is this is how I work. Like when uh, I'm low energy, it's really harder for me to get the the resources to to just uh, have a positive outlook and and be grateful. And I just know that I need to rest and trust that uh, tomorrow with new energy I will be able to. Um, to get back on track with gratitude and uh, with a positive outlook on life and the world. And I think this is, um, this is another important part about uh, energy, right? That it's about how we manage it and um, knowing ourselves and how we work. And for instance, I, I don't drink coffee. Um, and actually, I think it's for that same reason. I I don't uh, feel the need for cortisol. I um, I've seen uh, the effects that uh, that uh, traditional coffee have on me. Like I get a, a surge of energy and I get really agitated. But then I feel so sleepy that I feel I can't do much, and for me it just doesn't work <laughs> it, it, it doesn't make any sense to to have this habit you know yeah yeah and i think habit is maybe the key thing too because um you know it's not that coffee itself is bad it's more about the way that we use it and the dependencies that we build um and, and, and coffee especially is a very physically addictive substance and um we see it like you know, it's on the, on the spectrum of alcohol, you know, it, if I told you like so many people are like, don't talk to me until I've had my second cup of coffee, or I just need two cups of coffee in the morning and then I'll uh, be good to go. And if I said that to you about like, I just need two glasses of wine in the morning, you know, and then I'll be good to go. You'd be like, um, you have a problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, but we don't do that with coffee. And I would, I think that they're, they're, you know, have equally significant impacts on, on ourselves. And so it's about, it's not that either of them in and of themselves are bad. It's about what's right for our body, what's right for our energy and, and having the, the awareness and cultivating that, that awareness to know, you know, there are many people who can do a cup of coffee a day and it really just doesn't quite, you know, have a, have any negative impact. Um, I would challenge many of those people though, to try taking a month off and just see what happens because so often we are in a dependency and we don't actually acknowledge that it's, we don't see the effects that it's having on us because we're, we're so dependent on it. Um, but that said, there are many who would be like, yep, no, I just, you know, it's fine. 
And then, you know, now I'm drinking coffee again and it's fine. Um, so there are those people, but there are also so many people that I think are using it as a way to, um, you know, go beyond our body's capabilities and like not rest when we need to rest. And, um, you know, our body gives us signals like I'm tired. And very often in our culture, the response is, oh, drink coffee. I'm tired, drink coffee. No, your body is saying, please rest. <laughs> Um, and I, and I also want to acknowledge and understand, you know, not everybody has the ability and the freedom and the privilege to just rest when they want to. And so like, I, I understand yeah, that there are true. many circumstances, um, that might influence that decision, but if you have the capability to, you know, downshift even a little bit to do a little bit less, to take it a little easier to, you know, sometimes like my life is very busy. Um, and you know, sometimes I'll just have two or three minutes between a call and I'll just lie on the floor and close my eyes and put an eye mask on. And that might be the only real rest that I get, but doing that and actually taking that time instead of like checking my email, you know, some of it requires a bit of discipline. Um, exactly, say, yeah. oh, I, need, I need to rest. Um, and also perspective to see, you know, where can I actually um, remove something from my life? Where am I doing something that I actually don't want to do? Where am I telling myself that I need to um, do or be something that is actually not in alignment with me, which is going to then be a net energy drain as well. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that I love about the herbs that we use, we, um, we use adaptogenic herbs in our blend um, and adaptogens are herbs that there's a whole lot of science around this, but um, fundamentally they're they're helping your nervous system and your endocrine system handle stress better it's actually like exercise for your stress so they're able to you know lift 10 pounds then 15 pounds um, of stress more easily so, um and uh when you have a little bit of that buffer between you and stress you also have the the ability to use perspective you actually have more access to your cognitive executive function in your mind um, which gives you more of that purview, more of that metacognitive awareness to be like, wait a second, I don't even like this person. Why am I, you know, trying to, you know, hang out with, you know, make, make myself more exhausted and more stressed by maintaining social relationships that aren't actually serving me, for example, you know, mm -hmm. or, um, you know, I keep telling myself I have zero time to exercise, but I really could, you know, take this phone call and take a walk around the block while I'm on the phone call for, you know, or whatever. And so having that just a little bit of buffer to be able to see um, ways that we can, again, source our energy, downshift our energy, and just generally have a healthy relationship to our bodies and, and the energy that we are gifted with um, is is a really beautiful thing. And, and sometimes that may include, you know, I, I probably drink coffee myself about um, once a week. We have one blend that has coffee in it. Um, and then maybe once a month, I'll actually get like a latte at a cafe or something. And it's wonderful. I feel amazing. And I'm like, yes, this is awesome. I see why people love coffee. Um, <laughs> and, um, and then, um, you know, it's, it's kind of like I'm, I'm, I'm getting drunk, you know, and like that's the, you know, and I'm not going to do that all the time as my, as my normal MO, but it's not a bad thing. You know, it's about finding the right pattern and the right um, balance for your own life and your own body and really having that awareness of what works for you. Exactly. Exactly. That, that's what I believe it's most important. And um, in my experience as well, like I'm not forcing myself for instance to to feel grateful when i know that i'm really tired and i'm um defaulting to uh, a state of just <laughs> staying alive somehow um i know that i need to rest and once i rest i don't need to solve all the all of the the problems in in my head um, all of the the negative thoughts that i have but i just need to rest to detach and after I do do so, it somehow the problems disappear, and uh, I have a new perspective, and um, I have the the resources to to deal with that differently. And I think that's that's very important to uh, to do. And I'm really happy that that you mentioned this because uh, we we talk a lot about um, our brain, how it works, and um 
how we can actually get from a state of um, uh, to a state of responsiveness instead of a state of uh, reacting reacting to the situation so yeah i think it's it's amazing that uh that we have these kinds of alternatives that you're bringing this to to the world and um i know that you've uh you've generated uh, a special code for for our listeners as well right Yes, yes, we have. Uh, gratitude will get you 20% off at our store we, at wearerasa.com. Awesome, awesome. Thank you very much for, for being here with us, for sharing so many amazing ideas. And I think it was a, a really beautiful time spent, um, beautifully spent time. And um, yeah, I'm really happy that we that we had the opportunity to speak and to talk about energy and gratitude. Thank you, Lopa. Yeah. Likewise, thank you so much, Georgian. It's been a pleasure. Hey, Gratitude Seeker. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this interview. I really appreciate it. And if you could think of one person that would also benefit from it, share it with them. It might actually be the inspiration that they need to make their day or maybe even their life much better. Thank you so much once again. This has been Georgian Benta. Don't forget to keep seeking and spreading gratitude. Summer concerts, pool parties, chill nights under the stars. We're stocking up our closet so you're ready to look your best for all of it. At Plato's Closet in West Ashley and North Charleston, we're buying all things summer. So bring in your tees, tote bags, sandals, sunglasses, and more. We pay cash on the spot for gently loved name brand looks. Plato's Closet is the go-to destination for trend-forward teens and young adults who support local and shop sustainable. Visit Plato's Closet today. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. Are you experiencing more lack in your life than you used to? Unfortunately, some things are not in our control, but we can control how we see them. Join me on a seven-week journey from lack to abundance through gratitude. Go to georgianbenta.com slash abundance course. That's georgianbenta.com slash abundance course to join me now.